Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. We have three stories for you this week. DJI is releasing the Flightcart 100 impressive drone. We also have Wingtrot that is teasing a new drone. And then lastly, a drones for good story. So let's get to it. First up this week, DJI has released the Flightcart 100. Now this drone can carry a payload of 80 kilogram, which is 176 pounds, over a distance of six kilometers, 3.7 miles on a single battery. And it's one battery, interestingly. If you put the dual battery, the payload drops slightly to 65 kilograms, 143 pounds, but the range is going to increase to 12 kilometers or 7.4 miles. Now with no payload at all, this thing can cruise for 26 kilometers, 16 miles. That is kind of crazy. Uh, the maximum takeoff weight is a FT 150 kilogram, 149.9 kilogram. I'm sure there is a reason behind this, which is 330 pounds. It comes with a Hoyt system that has a 30 meter or 100 foot uh, cable, a retractable cable. And then it also has the anti-sway technology that we have seen before on a previous flight card model, and then also real-time uh, weighting. For safety, it has a built-in parachute with its own independent power supply. Now the drone in itself is built like a tank. It's got an IP55 rating and then a wind limit of 27 miles per hour. It's also packed with sensors, including the front and the rear phased array radar sensors, a 5 eye fisheye camera, and then LiDAR technology for uh, obstacle avoidance. Now the price is not as high as you may think, $12,500 for the base model. The predecessor, the Flight Car 30, is FAA approved in the US, but this model is not yet, but we're hoping that uh, this is going to change very soon. Next up, Swiss-based drone manufacturer Wingtra is teasing a new product launch for July 10th, right around the corner, and it looks like it could be actually a big deal for the mapping and the surveying world. Uh, Wingtra is known for its uh, high-precision vertical takeoff and landing, or EV-tall fixed-wing drones. Their current flagship, the Wingtra 1, is already pretty impressive. It can capture data at resolutions of 1.2 centimeters per pixel, and then also cover up to 200 uh, hectares, which is 494 acres, in a single flight. Now, the company posted a teaser this week. They said, uh, what we're about to share with you isn't just another product launch, it's a shift in what is possible. Now, the images show a silhouette of a sleek drone that's kind of, uh, what we've seen from drone manufacturers in the past, not a whole lot of detail. Uh, we don't have all the exact specs, obviously, but speculations lead to 60 minutes of flight time potentially, improved sensors, obviously, but especially for night operation, and then even better AI uh, for real-time data processing. We're definitely excited to see what they're going to unveil on July 10th, and we'll keep you updated in the uh, next edition of News Update. And then finally, a drones for good story. This is in Southwest China. A drone operator performed a pretty dramatic rescue with uh, the severe flooding that is going on over there. The drone pilot spotted a man that was stranded on a rooftop and was completely surrounded by rising floodwaters. So he acted quickly. He repurposed the agri agricultural drone that he was flying, uh, which he normally uses to spray fertilizers and to haul equipment. And he basically used the, uh, the cord to hoist the man from the rooftop and then fly him to safety uh, on a nearby road. The drone used was likely a heavy-duty agricultural uh, model. It's not clear exactly what model, but looks like a DJI Agress or close to it. Uh, these drones can typically carry a payload of over 100 pounds and then have a flight time of around 20 minutes. Now, this, this incident is the perfect example of, you know, how versatile of a tool the drone can be, especially in an emergency. Uh, the purpose here obviously was in search and rescue. It's not a specific search and rescue drone, but the operator was pretty quick into uh, using that and saving probably somebody's life right here. It's definitely a great reminder that all of these tools can be used for a lot of different purposes. And then on Post Flight, which is the show where we share our opinion in the premium community, we're going to cover all of these stories in more details, but also talk about rumors of the DJI Care refresh that has happened recently, and then a man who faces federal charges for attempting to destroy a law enforcement drone. It promises to be interesting. All right, that's all we have for you this week. Join us for the live Q&A on Monday, and then in Post Flight as well in the premium community. We'll see you then. I'm not going to diss the Walmart audience. That's my people. I'm just saying, give some opinions that are not always suitable for the YouTube audience. EG13. Uncensored, completely off script, except we have a script. You have a script. I have a script of questions and topics. I mean, the problem, obviously, we know what it is. It's is that DJI can't get drones into the country right now because of the ban that... Um, CBP is putting on those mm -hmm. drones. So I wonder what that would mean for people that had purchased the DJI Care Refresh. I Are mean, we 100% yeah. sure? 
I'm not. No, never. Of course. But I mean, could they release a model that's a multi-rotor that's designed to do smaller areas? Probably. Probably. 